I have talked about the first law of thermodynamics um, in which we saw that if you put in a certain amount of heat into a gas like oxygen, the heat energy would change into its internal energy, which is the sum of kinetic and potential energy of the molecules, and part of it can also do work by causing the gas to expand. So let's now look at some problems um, to see how we can measure or actually calculate these quantities. Now I'll start with, um, let me, uh, let, let me start by writing down the quantities that we, we would like to be able to measure or calculate. There is, there is heat, there is heat, there is work, and there is internal energy. Let me start with um, heat. Let me start with heat. How would I, if, if I want to heat this up, um, I could do it by putting a fire under it, a bit dangerous. Um, I can put it, do it by putting a, putting this box into a into a pail of hot water or I can do it electrically I can I can put a heater electrical heater below it and in any of those cases there are ways there are ways we could use to estimate or measure or calculate the amount of heat that would go uh, go into into the box um, now one one uh, one way in which um, this can be done easily and, and um, cleanly without messy fires and and uh, hot water is electrical. So in an electrical method, for example, um, you might we might imagine a heating element uh, of say of the kind that you see. Uh, in on an electric cooker, perhaps, or if you look inside a a, a kettle, um, you might see a coil of thick um, metallic strip, right? A coil of thick metallic strip that heats up when when you switch on the electricity, right? So this will be connected to some uh, voltage maybe through the main socket and okay and um, there'll be some voltage and that will pass some some current through it okay now when we use an electric kettle we don't normally um, think about the voltage and the current that goes through the heating elements but if we if we actually want to do an experiment uh, for example to check the first law of thermodynamics uh, or just to calculate the heat um, we can we would need to set this up i can either buy a uh, ready-made equipment or or get some voltmeters and ammeters and connect them properly Okay, now you shouldn't try this yourself without supervision, of course. You should have a teacher who who checks that you've done it correct, just to be safe. Okay, so, but for this example, I'm just going to assume that um, we have got it all set up and there are 
volt meters and ammeters that would show me what the voltage and current are. So I am just going to uh, make an example in which um, just going to think of some example value. Let's say if the voltage is maybe 50 volts, for example, and and perhaps there's a current of 0 0.5 amperes. Okay, and let's say I switch on this heating, uh, this heating element for um, say 100 seconds. 100 seconds. So it can be done, it's set up, but okay, but how? Let's say this is T, I'll put this T. But how, how do I know how much heat has, has gone in if, even if I have? measure the time, voltage and, and current. Right, I know that these, these would probably determine the amount of heat, heating. There is a formula that, that we will learn later on, or, or you might already have learned this from, from an earlier course in physics. The formula is this. It is that the energy the heat energy given out by by the heating element, um, you might have learned it as written as E or for energy or or Q for heat. So the energy is the heat, and the heat is the en electrical energy given out by given out by the heating element, and it's related to the current times the voltage times the time. So this actually uh, allows us, if we know the current and the voltage and the time, to find a value for the heat given out by the heating element. So since we are here, um, I'm just going to complete this calculation. 0 0.5 for the current, 50 for the volts, and 100 for the time in seconds. So that would be that would be 2500, 2500, and heat is energy. So it has units of joules. So it can be done. Um, can be set up. Now, next, let me look at let me look at. Um, Say the work done. Look at the work done. The work done, uh, in this case by a gas, is um, it, it comes from the gas expanding and maybe pushing out one of one of the sides of the box. Okay. And we know that work done is force times distance. But for a gas, for a gas, we have. Um, Already, I have already in in an earlier in an earlier session explained that the work done by a gas is its pressure times the change in volume of the gas. Okay, so if we know the pressure and we know the volume change as it expands during the heating, we would be able to find the um, the work done by the gas. Okay, and let me say a bit about the the internal energy. The internal energy, um, in this case, U. is a slightly more tricky bit. It is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of the molecules or atoms inside inside a body. Uh, it would be impossible to actually know every uh, the the kinetic and potential energies of each and every molecule in 
the body of gas and add them all up. That's quite impossible. So usually, um, usually if we need to do any calculations on this, uh, we would usually the internal energy would usually not be something that we can calculate directly with a formula. So, and in fact, in fact, the internal energy is something that we would actually, we might actually want to calculate from the formula of the first law of thermodynamics. And what I mean is this, in the first law of thermodynamics, if you, if you remember, it says that the heat that goes into the body is equal to the change in internal energy plus the work done by the body or by the expanding gas. So what I meant is that we can use this first law if you can measure and calculate the heat that goes in and if you can calculate from this formula the work done then you would know this number and this num number and from these two numbers you can then find the change in internal energy. Now that doesn't tell you the full actual uh, uh, internal energy but at least it can tell us how much it has changed when, when you put in some heat and, and if, if it does some work. So you can think of the first law of thermodynamics as one way, one way to calculate the to, to tell us about the internal energy. So that's what we might do if you want to know the internal energy for or know about the internal energy for most real materials. Okay. Now there is at one material, one thing in which we can actually calculate the internal energy. But that is not a real thing, it's not a real object, it is the ideal gas. It is our ideal gas which I have been talking about. If you recall, for the ideal gas, we have seen when I talked about the kinetic theory that the ideal gas internal energy is purely kinetic energy and it is given by um, the total of the kinetic energy of the molecules is given by 3 over 2 number of moles times gas constant times the temperature. So there is a very simple formula in this case and it is often uh, um, useful when we do uh, to do problems in which we make use of this to do some calculations with the first law of thermodynamics. So it is a simple formula that we can use for exercise. Okay. So what well, right what we have seen is that we can have we can either measure or, or calculate one or more of these quantities and we can also use this to find one quantity if we can measure the other two. So um, now while we are here, I I should define I should define and and actually find the heat capacity of the gas. Now the idea of a heat capacity, uh, if I call it if I call it C. If I call it C, is the um, amount of heat that that you put in. Is the amount of heat that you you put in divided by divided by the temperature change. The change in temperature. Okay. So in this case, in this case, for the case of the ideal gas, um, 
the heat that goes in as we've seen can go into changing the internal energy and doing work so usually it is a little bit complicated because depending on whether we allow the gas to expand with a movable side or, or, or we have a fixed box we may or may not have work done by the gas okay so which means that um, we might need different amounts of heat to heat the gas up to the same temperature but by the same temperature all right if we allow this to expand we would need more heat heats input for the same temperature rise because some of the heat has to go into doing the work so to make things easy um, for now all right i'm going to talk about the specific heat capacity of the gas or of a gas for the for the case when um, there is no increase in volume so for the case where the volume is fixed fixed weight so which means that uh, i fix this this wall i don't allow it to move for what i'm going to say next so if i want to find a heat capacity then if i want to find a heat capacity if the volume is fixed then there's no work done okay there's no work done the heat is just equal to the change in internal energy so the change in internal energy divided by the change in the temperature gives the heat capacity now if you look at this formula we know that the heat capacity is proportional uh, no the internal energy is proportional to the temperature Right, so any change would be proportional to the change in temperature in, in the same way. So therefore, the change of U over the change of T is simply the same as U divided by T, which is equal to, now if you look at this formula, I get U divided by T, if I divide the U by T, and I divide this by T, then the T cancels, and I'm left with this 3 over 2 and R. So this gives me a formula for the heat capacity of the um, of of the gas if the volume is fixed, and this is useful because it means that if I know uh, how much heat I put in, assuming that the volume is fixed, I would be able to calculate the change in temperature. Or if I know the temperature rise, I would be able to calculate the increase in internal energy. Now, and because in this case we had to, I, I kept the volume fixed, we would often add the subscript V to the heat capacity of gas to, to remind us that uh, that this formula, or that we are talking about heat capacity for fixed volume All right remember that if the volume is not fixed if the gas expands when it's heated then more heat is needed and the answer would be different